49ers at Chargers, Thursday night football. Marco, who do you like and why? I like San Diego in this game. Alex Smith returned last week for the 49ers, and they erupted for 40 points. He'll have a regression this week because he's facing a real defense. Okay, so one of the basic wise guy handicapping tenants is if a team does exceedingly well the week before, you want to assume that's a short-term aberration and go against it because likely the public's going to overreact. But to me, a key part of that is the public overreacting. So as you look at this line and you see San Diego minus nine, what do you think the line would have been if this game were played last week? Though in a way, you look at the San Diego side, they had even a more impressive performance. So if you have two teams that, that, that maybe are slightly overvalued because of last week, how do you as a handicapper handle that? Well, there's no question San Diego's over. You're paying a premium for San Diego this week because if you look just two weeks ago, there, San Francisco on the road was getting eight and a half in Green Bay. And, you know, San Diego's still not in the playoff picture. They're, they're behind Kansas City. Last week's win, impressive. But remember, Matt Castle was out. Which brings up a, a reoccurring theme because we're going to have a number of quarterbacks in the NFL that are questionable this week. I, really, I rarely disagree with Vegas, but I actually tweeted out Vegas had Castle rated as worth one and a half points points. Yeah, that, that was absolutely ludicrous. I agree with you. So we had, it made me feel a little foolish because we were projecting that, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers had been worth six points earlier in the year, and I think it's comparable now, and he's a questionable this week. I thought Castle would be five, not so much because Castle's as good as Rodgers, but the key is the relative difference between one and two. Right. And with the quarterback that was backing up in KC, I thought that was worth at least five points. Did you see value on San We had a lot of pros that had big games on San Diego both before and after the announcement of the quarterback situation. Did you look at there being value on San Diego laying nine when we knew Castle was out? I was surprised like you that it was nine. I generally, because one of my old school theories is I generally don't like to take a team you know that's got the injured star because the rest of the team sucks it up. But this was just... I think a quarterback... I think that's one thing that I'm going to be talking about. If you don't have a quarterback that can be serviceable, I just don't think you can win in this league. Well, that's the key. Kansas City didn't. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teams come in, and we, in the example we used last week when we talked about the game was the Steelers having a guy like Charlie Batch as a backup. Who, the Steelers, let's be honest, the Steelers are probably the one team that I would say this year that's an exception to that rule. As long as they don't, their quarterback doesn't give the ball away, <laughs> their defense might even last, you know, it's not like their defense is going to outscore the other team, but they're at least going to get you where even, you know, even if you just need a field goal. I mean, Batch, let's not make Batch out to have performed too well uh, uh, in those first, you know, he didn't play all the four games. It's, it was pretty much we would intercept the ball, it'd be three and out, and we'd kick a field goal and won those games. Well, there was an old saying, I don't know if you remember, another former Steeler that went to Denver, Bubby Brister. Remember whenever he took over for Elway and they ended up going to the Super Bowl, but it was just drive the bus, just don't wreck it. <laughs> it was the saying with him. And, but Brister didn't take him to the Super Bowl. But he... he Played several games okay, in that, right. in that year. Clear. We don't want to right. get, say I mean, he got a Super Bowl ring out of out of that. that year. He didn't get one with the Steelers. A lot of trainers have that too. All right, so let's let's get back though. I'm I'm just confused on your your initial take. Is you're saying San Francisco is going to regress? That means they're a little overrated now. San Diego's overrated. What makes San Francisco a, or San Diego appealing? Where San Francisco is, and if both of them overperformed last week, I don't. The phrase of overrated, I really didn't use that uh, phrase. You put that in. What I'm saying is, last week, Alex Smith had a good game. He got his second chance because they were playing so bad. He got reinstated. It wasn't an injury. So there's no, thing. there's no momentum around that. There's momentum around that, but when you're facing the Seattle Seahawks and now you're going to San, so you're Diego, saying that, that you're saying that good result is fraudulent. Absolutely. Okay. Do you agree both teams are highly motivated this week? Oh, if you believe it or not, yeah. I mean, San Francisco is still both mathematically. Teams are in it. Both They're teams in it. are in it. Um, how would this handicap change if it wasn't for the Chargers-Raiders game two weeks ago? Honestly, this line would be 
it would be over double digits. Would it? Or is it? Is this just a premium line? Is this line just really high to start with? It's high to start is with. Is it really going to be 11? I think it definitely would have been 10, 10 and a half if they would have beaten Oakland because they would have been on, uh, you know, at that point a six or seven game winning streak. And you have that stat of them in the month of December. Exactly. They just don't lose. And, and the, them losing in December kind of almost called into question that stat. And I wonder, when you look at that game now, how do you account for it? It was just one of the – it was a fluke because the Raiders did it in a fashion that they normally don't do it. It wasn't turnovers. They ran the ball down the throat of San Diego, and that's why a lot of people thought. I'm going to give you a, a chance to take that back because i got to be honest. I'm sure the viewers, when they're thinking, I wonder what Marco's going to say about this. It was a fluke. I, you know, I don't think that's the takeaway, right? So here's the question. Is it potentially... Well, let me give an opinion. You can maybe okay. go a little beyond the fluke part. Is it the fact that San Diego is a low intangibles team in general, which I've been, in my opinion, I've been saying all year, and that you just don't ever know what, what team's going to show up? And that with a team like San Diego, they can get run out of the stadium against even an average team if they psychologically aren't there. Is it just the... Is it just the, not the randomness, but just the uh, unreliability of San Diego? Well, unreliability is a good word. And, and to go back to my word of the, was it a fluke? What I meant is if you went back and looked at San Diego's losses this year, most of them, when I say fluky type losses, is like the first Oakland game, it was special teams that did mm -hmm. them in. There were several. They were, out, they were outplayed in the trenches, you're saying. In this. So, in what this, does that tell? That's what my point is. Do we look. You're saying the line's two points difference potentially because of that game. Do we. Do we think that's valid, meaning that game really revealed a weakness on San Diego? Or do we think potentially if it was truly a fluke, then we're thinking San Diego got great value here because they would be laying 11 well, instead of 9? If there was a weakness pointed out and it was the way they ran the ball, Oakland ran the ball on San Diego, it's not going to be exploited this week with the 49ers without Frank Gore. You know, he, he's gone for the season. That was a big part of their running game. They lost a lot with him, and that's why last week they, re, they went back to Alex Smith because they, they needed to go to the passing game. They had to rely more on the passing game, and I just don't think they'll be able to do that against San Diego. Each week we talk about, on Thursday, the traveling team and the short prep. How do you see this week that playing out? Well, it's definitely, we talk about, you know, it's always a disadvantage. Some weeks it's more than others. The fact that San Francisco's on the road and they're playing a team that's not in their, you know, that they don't play every year. So you don't have that luxury of already kind of knowing what to expect from that team. So this is a major disadvantage for San Fran. So you're saying because San Fran, it's not a divisional opponent that you're very familiar with, the unfamiliarity combined with the short time makes it, uh, prep time makes it even more of a disadvantage. Absolutely. Anything to close or give us your projection? I got San Diego. It's around the number, but I am going to go with San Diego, 27-16. to 16. I will point one thing out on San Francisco, and it's another reason why I'm siding on San Diego, because this is almost a little bit too obvious for my blood to take San Diego. But the 49ers, they're 5-3 and three in their last eight games. The five wins all are against teams with sub-500 records. All right, now it's your turn to continue the conversation in the comment section with Marco and me. And next up, we're going to be talking about our first bowl game of the year, and it's actually my week one bowl best bat, Northern Illinois versus Fresno State.